Scores of Democrats are here in Chicago making the case for Kamala Harris, but last night an unusual sight on the convention stage as some prominent Republicans offered their endorsement. Trump's former press secretary, a self-described true believer in his agenda, who refused, uh, she says, to peddle his election lies and said enough is enough on January 6th, she endorsed Kamala Harris. CNN's own Anna Navarro used the story of her childhood to highlight the threat she says Trump poses to democracy. I fled communism from Nicaragua when I was eight years old. Let me tell you, what communist dictators do. They attack the free press. They call them the enemy of the people, like Ortega does in Nicaragua. They refuse to accept legitimate elections when they lose and call for violence to stay in power, like Maduro is doing right now in Venezuela. Now, you tell me something. Do any of those things sound familiar? The Republicans at the DNC each came to reject Trumpism, excuse me, Trumpism in their own unique ways, but their message is the same. Their country comes above a party they no longer recognize. When I was press secretary, I got skewered for never holding a White House briefing. It's because unlike my boss, I never wanted to stand at that podium and lie. Now here I am behind a podium advocating for a Democrat. And that's because I love my country more than my party. My hero, John McCain, taught us, taught us to put country over party. John McCain's Republican Party is gone, and we don't owe a damn thing to what's been left behind. So let's turn the page. Let's put country first. Let's put adults in the room where our country deserves. Joining me now is a former advisor to Mike Pence, Olivia Troy. Uh, she is speaking at the convention tonight. We've, we've spoken so many times, Olivia, over the last couple of years, but here you are at the Democratic National Convention. I, you and I have talked about this before. You are a lifelong Republican. You used to vote Republican in every election. Basically, whoever was on the ballot, that's what you did. And here you are at the DNC. It's got to be surreal. It's, it's absolutely surreal. Yeah. I mean, I can't believe we're sitting here in the convention center, and I'm about to talk before Democrats. Right. The last convention I went to was in Philadelphia for the RNC. Back in the day, it was an, I was still an RNC staffer at the time. That's how long it's been. So, um, yeah, you know, it's an emotional moment. Uh, but I think what you're seeing is all of us coalesce and say it's country over party. And we are hoping to pave a better and brighter future for the American people, because those of, of, of us that have lived it, like Stephanie Grisham said, uh, we know we know what Donald Trump really is. You know, we've, we've, we've heard all the comments, everything he's done. And I'm here because I truly believe that Kamala Harris and Tim Waltz are going to take us down a better, better path. And let's listen to a little bit of what uh, your former colleague, Stephanie Grisham, uh, had to say last night. I wasn't just a Trump supporter. I was a true believer. He used to tell me, it doesn't matter what you say, Stephanie. Say it enough and people will believe you. Behind closed doors, Trump mocks his supporters. He calls them basement dwellers. On January 6th, I asked Melania if we could at least tweet that while peaceful protest is the right of every American, there's no place for lawlessness or violence. She replied with one word, no. Yeah, Olivia, I mean, you and I have talked about January 6th, the way uh, former President Trump uh, handled that that day, mishandled it that day, talk about it in that fashion. Yeah. But I, the, the thing that stood out to me, and maybe Stephanie has told this story before, but I had not heard it, where she said that Trump used to refer to his supporters as basement dwellers. Yep, and I was in the room when he said, I don't want to shake hands with those dirty people, those disgusting people. Um, so... I think, you know, you have his former press secretary saying this is what he thinks of his supporters. I personally detest the fact that he speaks of him in that way because it's so disrespectful. And what I, I think what really breaks my heart is just how much they rally around someone who really just doesn't care about them, like has complete disregard, has no identification with the middle class or the working class. And I think that's the contrast, right? You have Donald Trump on that ticket, J.D. Vance, who's constantly attacking women, and you have Kamala Harris and Tim Waltz who are saying, you know, we know what it's like to work through college. I worked my way through college. Yeah. Like, they can identify, right? He was, you know, he supported farmers. Tim Walls is a coach. You know, all these things that 
make me think of my dad, honestly. My dad was a lifelong truck driver, and I, I see myself like identifying with this ticket and so different. But you know, I want to I do want to bring something up that Stephanie Grisham talked about last night. Yeah. That was very personal for me. She talks about what Donald Trump said when he went to go visit the ICU when there was an emergency and yeah. and you know that it was all a media moment and what he wanted, he wanted the cameras in there. What she's talking about, because I've had that conversation with her, she's talking about the day of the El Paso shooting. Wow. And you know, her and I have talked about that, what she was seeing from her perspective while I was living at briefing Mike Pence about what was happening in the Walmart, while also telling people in the White House that my aunt was in that Walmart that day. And so I, you know, I say that because as an American, think of me outside of just not a former Trump official, think about being just a human being in that situation yeah. and seeing the president of the United States and hearing him talk that way and thinking about that fact that like, these are the people from your hometown community and that that could have been my aunt in the ICU. She was just very lucky that day that someone pulled her away. She saw the shooter. And to think that that's very, that's very real for me and the staff, because I know that Stephanie and, and I have had emotional conversations about that. And Olivia, I, I suspect that a lot of Trump supporters out there would say, oh, you, you're a member of the deep state or you're a never Trump Republican. Can you talk about how much you have personally put on the line speaking out like this? Yeah, I gave up my entire career. I have, you know, I spent almost 20 years working in national security as an intel officer. You know, I started my career in Republican politics and then left and sort of decided I, this is what I want to do. I want to serve. And, you know, when you serve your country, you serve under various administrations, regardless of politics. And I can say, like, I know that I went in day in and day out, worked hard, was there to truly serve the American people, help Mike Pence, help the administration. And so, like, they can accuse us of saying that. All we're doing is telling the truth, and everyone that worked with us there knows it. They know exactly what it is. Do you wish Mike Pence were here? That would be amazing. Would you <laughs> wish he would say more, speak out more? I do. I mean, there's no one else uh, that has lived what Donald Trump and the danger that he is, that he poses more than him. I have seen him in very uh, moments of crisis where he had to navigate how we were gonna handle Donald Trump and how we were gonna not let him derail things that we were trying to do when we were trying to help the American people, especially during times of COVID. Again, in, in mass shooting situations that were actually hate crimes and domestic terrorism here that I had to cover because I was, yeah. you know, I covered that portfolio and how we had to carefully navigate. How do you message in a moment where that requires true leadership to the American people while also countering the fact that it's the person sitting in the Oval Office of that, at the time who's actually driving some of the hate crimes and some of these incidents that are happening in the country by the rhetoric that he's using and by the rhetoric that a lot of these more far-right Republican leaders are using. And they're still using it today. Yeah. Well, we'll see you talking about some of this tonight. Olivia Troy, great to see you as always. Thanks. Really appreciate it. Thanks so much.